He's the CEO that left Australia's biggest airline with a shattered reputation and costly court battles, and now he's paying the price. I don't know why you get a huge payout for underperforming, <laughs> especially if you're a company that's had a lot of government handouts. Way over the top, I don't care what. Way more than the Prime Minister or anybody else like that, so I don't think he needs any more. He is a rogue. Fortunately, he hasn't destroyed the airline, but he's pocketed millions. After mounting pressure from investors and a detailed review into the airline's management, former Qantas boss Alan Joyce will have more than $9 million cut from his long and short-term bonuses. He departed the airline in September last year following a string of controversies including the illegal sacking of about 1,700 workers, the selling of tickets on already cancelled flights and allegations of anti-competitive behaviour. Qantas has left a trail of destruction under Alan Joyce. The former CEO will be left with $1.8 million for his 2023 bonus and walks away with $125 million in total over his 15-year career with the airline. While the more than $9 million dock bonus is one of the largest ever clawbacks in corporate pay, some say that's still not enough. The company did uh, grant the former CEO bonuses in prior years, which do not appear to have been clawed back, which, based on our calculations, are approximately 4 to $5 million. Short-term bonuses of other executives, including current CEO Vanessa Hudson, have also been docked by 33%, but advisors to institutional investors say rebuilding the Qantas brand will take time. Cancelling a bonus is one step, but it doesn't change the company culture and it doesn't change company governance. The review found that mistakes were made and in some cases the responses of the board and management were a contributing factor. It said Alan Joyce had a command and control leadership style and this led to events that negatively impacted Qantas's relationships with its stakeholders, including customers, employees, investors and governments. There will be um, you know, clearly scrutiny at future shareholder meetings. Investors will be looking at you know, the alignment between remuneration and incentives, as well as board oversight to make sure you know, these issues don't happen again. The review makes 32 recommendations, including changes to the way executives are paid and greater oversight of when a CEO can sell shares. But Qantas concedes it still has much work to do to win back the trust of its customers. The review was commissioned partly because of pressure from customers and shareholders who were concerned about the direction of the company. I spoke to Rachel Waterhouse from the Australian Shareholders Association. Welcome to the business. What's your reaction to the Qantas report and the decision to cut $9 million of Alan Joyce's bonuses? Was that fair? Retail shareholders are delighted with the, what has happened and what has been announced as far as the clawback. It has been a question that we have had since last year. Multiple things happened last year as far as the, the ACCC and also the, the fines that were potential fines at that point in time and also not investing in planes. So there are quite, quite a lot of things and how consumers were being treated. So a lot of concern from retail shareholders, but not just from retail shareholders, from consumers who were really disappointed with the brand and the reputation and really a lot of opportunity for improvement. And were you happy with the amount today or is there another amount? I mean, what sort of bonus do you think would be appropriate for Mr Joyce? Yeah, looking at this, it's great to see a significant amount, you know, $9.3 million that's been clawed back. So based on the short-term incentives and the long-term incentives, that's a really good step. So we will be, as you know, we get towards the end of the year and see the annual report coming out, go through the detail of the remuneration and see what else might be there. But it's good that there has been an independent review and that has been released and made public. So a lot of really good steps there as far as the board, what they're doing right now. Mr Joyce is in line to receive um, more bonuses in 2024. Should he receive more bonuses in your view? That should definitely be reviewed. So from our perspective, what we would want to be doing is looking through that detail as far as what's next and what that means for not just the CEO, but also the group and the management team. And from today's announcement, you can see that there's a change there that's happening as far as the number of uh, management has changed now. So there's a shift and I guess we just need to see what happens next. The good thing is that there are 32 recommendations. It is an independent report and 
they just need to make sure that they're all implemented effectively. On that shift, you mentioned Qantas has recently uh, elected a new chair, John Mullen, and he said Qantas let Australians down uh, and the board wants to learn from the mistakes of the past. Uh, do you believe Qantas will learn from this report, learn from the past and make changes to repair the damage to its reputation? Often you see that through outcomes and actions. So I won't jump straight into a yes, but we are impressed with the chair and John Mullen that has been appointed and we have seen him in other organisations make really good change. So if he takes that on board and the 32 recommendations and has real clear oversight of that at the board level and they happen, I think it's all heading in the right direction. I guess, how long will that take? And, um, you know, what precedent is there for um, a company like Qantas that has gone from having, you know, being one of the most trusted brands in Australia to being one of the least? Um, how do they come back from this and turn their reputation around? Yeah, if you look at the Banking Royal Commission, there were organisations that did awful things that came to light. And one example that retail shareholders tell me all the time is CBA having a very detailed plan around what they were going to do. Having a chair that came in, Catherine Livingston, and a fairly new CEO, and what they did was they worked that through. They told shareholders and consumers what they were going to do, what they were going to do differently, and they ticked off all of that plan. And that's the expectation here, is that John Mullen, the board, the group, as far as the CEO and the management team, will make sure those actions happen. The independent report is good because it's independent. Internal and external stakeholders have really looked through what happened. They've come up with a plan. Qantas have said their thoughts on it and there's timings in there. But it, it can't just set and forget it. It really needs to be an active and live change process. So you're quite uh, confident or at least optimistic that Qantas will implement all those recommendations and uh, be able to turn its reputation around? We're hoping so, but we will be keeping a close eye on it. We have the AGM coming up later in the year and that's a great opportunity for retail shareholders to ask questions and see. By then it will be about a year and a bit since the first questions were being asked to see what has happened and what has changed. Qantas, of course, faced it's faced ongoing pressure over the last few years on customer service issues, um, allegations of uh, you know, selling tickets to cancelled flights and illegally sacking workers. Now, your organisation represents shareholders. Um, what sort of concerns did they and the wider community have about um, executive pay uh, following these scandals? And you know, those concerns really did um, help to put pressure on you know, lead to this review. So help us understand what these concerns were. Yeah, if we look back in time, last year we were calling for a change at the chair level and a change at the board level. We were really concerned around the reputation and the company. Retail shareholders are consumers. They hop on flights. They had issues around loyalty points, just like everyone else. And so when I would go and meet our retail shareholders, they would not only tell me about their experience as a retail shareholder, but their customer experience issue. So they want the best thing. Companies that are ethical and behave well often have great reputations. And so that was their concern. And there were risks as far as the, the costs and the elements and bad decisions that had been made. And that was the concern to retail shareholders. So two things from an investment perspective, but also from our, you know, a lot of Australians have a love of the brand Qantas and they really, want it to, to go well, but there was just so much there to unpack and really disappointing for consumers and for retail shareholders. The timing of a CEO payout and when he sold his shares effectively and the treatment of consumers was, was not okay. And we'll continue to see how shareholders respond to that news today. Rachel Waterhouse, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Nadia.